I have rented and used the Fujifilm X-H2S for the past two weeks and as an XT user I have quite a lot of things to say about it. So in today's video we are going to talk about the seven points that impacted me the most while using the Fujifilm X-H2S. And I'm also going to answer the question, did I make a mistake by choosing the X-T5? One important thing that people do not mention enough in my opinion is the fact that if you want to unlock all the possibilities of this camera, you need a CF Express. Now, not only do you need a CF Express, but you will also need a CF Express reader. I don't assume that your computer come with one to go with it. If you go with the recommended CF Express Type B from Fujifilm, you are looking at approximately $350 to $400 extra on top of your X-H2S. And that's something that you should keep in mind, right? because you can use SD cards, but you won't have the ProRes, you might not have the 4K120, and that's an extra expense that, in my opinion, is worth mentioning and emphasizing. When it comes to the form factor of the X-H2S, well, it is really comfortable in hand. Coming from the X-T5 that I use now all the time with the small rig uh, retro cage, the grip of the X-H2S is still bigger than the grip of the X-T5 with the retro cage and overall more comfortable. So this is definitely a point that the X-H2S has going for it. And if you're looking for the most comfortable camera to have in hand, the X-H2S is definitely the camera to go for. Now, while the grip and the feeling in the hand of the X-H2S is much better than the X-T5, I would say though, that the controls of the X-H2S, I have some problems with them. If you look at the focus mode switch, on the X-H2S, you have to tap it, scroll to use your focus mode. On the X-T5, I don't even need to look at it. I know that if I'm on the far right position, it's manual, on the far left is single, in the middle is continuous. That's just an extra step that gets in the way when you want to create an image or a video. Now, secondly, the ISO button. It is so frustrating to have an ISO button that you have to click on and then go to your back dial, scroll and click again on your ISO dial to validate, right? It would have been so much easier to have a clickable front dial or back dial like in, it is the case on the X-T5, right? This would not, in my opinion, have changed anything uh, in terms of build and it would have been a much better controller approach on the X-H2S. So for the control, I would say that the point go to the X-T5, much more intuitive and much quicker to work with. Now, if we talk peripherals, well, uh, there is no question here. The X-H2S win easily. You have a full HDMI, you have a jack cable to monitor your sound, right? Just those two aspects is game changer if you want to especially work on video. The micro HDMI on the X-T5, I'm always using it with a clamp to make sure that the pressure doesn't go on the port itself. I'm still using the clamp on the X-H2S, but I definitely feel more comfortable and I feel like the peripheral itself will definitely last longer than on the X-T5. So if you're looking to rig your camera and use it for video, definitely the X-H2S, which is a video oriented camera, is I think the way to go. Now, when it comes to the screen, the flip out screen is good. I can film myself, which I'm doing right now. I can see myself, right? But when you are behind the camera, overall, I would say that the X-T5 screen suits uh, me and my needs better because if I have to shoot low, I can just have the screen come out while on the X-H2S, well, it comes out on the side, right? Of course, usually if you want to use this for a more high-end project, or run and gun shoot, you will have an extra monitor. But I would say that the X-T5 screen is actually better for video and photos. So point goes to the X-T5 for that. However, I would add to that that the X-H2S screen and EVF both have better quality, better contrast, and it is more pleasing to review your footage and your pictures on the screens of the X-H2S. But if I had to choose between the X-T5 and the X-H2S screen, I would pick the X-T5 screen. 
All right, and point number six is the 6.2K open gate. I think that this is really game changing when it comes to content creation, right? This definitely will become more and more the norm moving forward, I think, because vertical content, right? Whenever you work for projects for clients, they always ask for both uh, horizontal and vertical cuts. So having the 6.2K allows you to have that to crop in to have that 4K resolution, but to also have that vertical resolution and to repurpose everything that you shoot. So it's a way for me to do more with less and that's exactly what I'm looking for. And the 6.2K honestly is one of the main points while I'm deciding to rent this and give it a try compared to my X-T4 right now that I'm using for videos. 4K 120p it's, is good. It's good to have, but for me, the 6.2K is definitely the most uh, attractive aspect of this camera. Okay, and finally, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the PASM dial. For photography, I 100,000% prefer the dials. Uh, it's way easier to for myself because I love shooting manual, controlling all the parameters that I want to control, um, to just switch every parameters with my lens on the aperture ring with my ISO and my shutter speed dial. On the X-H2S, if you start going to M and then you want to change your ISO, it's just a pain. If you want to choose shutter priority or aperture priority, that would be better. But for me, it just, in my opinion, it's just a better experience when it comes to photography to shoot with the X-T5. Now for videos though, I set up the X-H2S with seven custom modes only for videos. And that's a really good experience because whether I want to shoot 4K24, 4K60, 4K120, 6K24, um, if I want to shoot B-Row or ProRes internally, it's easy to switch from one mode to another and to have everything set up. And I think that this is much better for video because usually for video, when it comes to adjusting your exposure, you will either change a bit your aperture to see uh, the depth of field that you're working with, or you will use the ND filter. So this is a better experience for video for sure. And it allows you to quickly switch from basically frame rates and resolution. All right, so those are my impressions, uh, initial impression of the X-H2S after two weeks of use. Now, definitely, I don't feel that I made a mistake when it comes to choosing the X-T5 for photography. I think that the ergonomics of the X-T5 for photography is clearly better. The X-H2S as a video-centric camera is much better for video, but I would say that none of them are perfect. And for me, the perfect camera would be something like an X-T5S, something that would have basically the sensor of the X-H2S with the body of the X-T5, but I still consider that the X-H2S is a great video-centric camera. And that's why I rented it to see how it would work compared to my current X-T4. And if it makes sense for me moving forward to upgrade to it, to be able to create more content. If I upgrade to it, I want this camera to be an investment, right? To make me some money. So this is why I would pick it. But so far so good and especially the 6.2K has been extremely helpful when it comes to creating content for myself but also for clients out there. All right, so that's it for today. Let me know if you have any questions about what I mentioned today and if you missed it, check out this video right here where I talk about the X-T5 after two months of use. See you there.